Hi folks, it's Nigel from Ambling Trails. We're on the moors again, and in fact this is Angles Ark Moor. 2,800 acres of moorland, wet, wild and windy. And because it's like that, we've got to be in Lancashire. Plan today is that we've, probably you can see behind me, I've got Winter Hill. And so, leaving the road there, we're now heading over toward what is called Great Hill. Yes, I can't believe there's actually a hill that's named itself the Great Hill. But there it is, that's where we're going. Then we're heading over to a place called White Coppice, and then we head back to where we started. It's about nine miles all the way around, so why not join me? I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy the fun and the scenery. So, less talking, let's get walking. One of the things I love about this walk is these slabs of stone. They've been laid across the moors for two or three miles and makes it very accessible. Otherwise, we'd be knee deep in the bog. From what I understand, it was laid in about 1999. But that's about all I can find out. Other than the fact they did come from some mill or other. But yeah, it's really helpful. So I'm stood beside a stone wall that's actually an old boundary wall between Chorley and Blackburn. And that was actually built in the 1840s. And the 1840s is referred to as the Hungry Years. And what was happening in that time was that it was a depression. And so what the government did was approve a number of projects for obviously to increase employment during the time. In this instance, it was agreed that this particular wall could be built. And we're going to follow this wall for about two miles till we get to Grays Hill. Interesting fact about Stonewall is that um, each meter of a stone wall takes a ton of stone and we're following this wall for two miles so you can imagine that employed a lot of people to actually get the wall built quite sure where it gets its title from. However, there are two redeeming factors. One is this kind of lovely seat, and the fact that it's out of the wind, regardless of which way the wind's blowing, because it's a cross shape, and there's a seat on either side. And then the other one is you do get great views. You can easily see for 20 miles away. Um, here you can see right over to the Lake District, um, over to Blackpool if you so wish, Isle of Man, yeah, quite good, um, good clear views, but not today. However, I can see Darwin Tower, Rivington Pike, Winter Hill, so I can see a reasonable distance. 
so on most days you do get a reasonably great view. Right, let's move on. So this is the remains of Drinkwater Farm, probably only about half a mile or so from the top of Great Hill. But it is amazing how much it's out of the wind in comparison. And in lots of ways, I can imagine in summertime, it would have been quite an idyllic setting, I would have thought. One of the interesting facts for me now is just the difference in the population. The most current census actually said there's 23 people in the Angles Ark area. So that's an area that covers 2,800 acres. Compare that to London where there's 50 people per acre. Quite a difference. However, in the 1840s, there was around about 270 people that were registered um, in Angles Ark area. So quite a few more. And I think that would be just the various farms that are dotted around. So there's probably 10, 12 ruins of old farms. And you can imagine easily 10, 12 people, three generations living in each farm building. Before we leave Drinkwater Farm, it's worth having a look here at these memorials to Joe, the fell runner, who actually died in 1991. Well, I believe he used to spend many an hour frequenting this particular area. As you can see, I think it's an absolute great memorial to him. Another one there. But the really outstanding thing for me, he used to hide a cup. And you can just see the cup in there. That's what the uh, white part is. And obviously it says Joe's cup. So he hid a cup away and then he would come up and um, there was a stream nearby and he would take a drink of water. Great idea. Now we're going to head over to Black Brook. Um, there's an actual mine there that we'll investigate and one or two waterfalls as well. And then we'll descend into White Coppice. Originally it was three guys who got together to form a partnership. But one of the partners died in 1694. The wife, his wife actually tried to claim profit from the mine, but lost the case in the chance report. So she was a bit, a bit hacked off. So she actually diverted the stream to flood the mines. So the mines were not sufficient for quite a number of years. Eventually, the mines got going again, and I think it was a new ownership. And at their peak in 1789, they actually produced 73 tons of lead. I think that was quite a bit. So we've now arrived at White Coppice. So I'm on the green, which is the cricket pitch. You can see there, cricket pavilion. And over this way, we actually have the scoreboard. So in the 1800s, there was a factory owned by 
Alfred Ephraim Eccles. And he was seen as being quite progressive in his time because he allowed the windows of the cotton mill, the factory, to be opened to allow fresh air in. Quite amazing to think that that is noteworthy and has been handed down in time. However, the other things that he um, brought to the factory and the workers was the fact they had a games room which had a billiard table in it, I believe. Also, um, a meeting room. And one of the main attributes he gave to the village was the cricket club. So the cr cricket club owns its existed to Alfred and it's been in play for 140 years. And as you can see, it's in quite an idyllic setting. So we're on the fringes of Angles Ark Moor now and we're on a road surprisingly, or should I say not surprisingly, called Moor Road. The house behind me is Manor House and that's been the Manor House of Angles Ark since the 1200s or there's been a house on that site since the 1200s. The house behind me is a bit more recent, it's actually dated 1604 so it's been around still for quite some time. A younger version of the house is down the road. That one's dated 1707. Yeah, that's the young version. Okay, let's get onto more road and we're heading to Lead Mines Clough now. This is the ruins of Hempshaw Farm. We're just going over that hill there and then we will have returned. 